Welcome back. Well, that massive storm last weekend that hit the south and central U.S., it could end up causing an estimated $80 billion to $90 billion in total d damage and economic loss. That's a preliminary estimate from AccuWeather. But Brad Rippey, USDA meteorologist, joining us now. Brad, pictures say a thousand words and the photos of farm fields flooded. We're talking about thousands of acres that will need to be replanted. Yeah, we're going to be dealing this with dealing with this for a long time, all the way from southern and eastern Arkansas, right into the Ohio Valley. Some of these areas seeing their worst flooding since the spring of 1997, almost 30 years ago. That water is going to take a while to work its way down the system. Again, you can see a lot of these rivers in moderate to to major flood stage across the mid south and lower Midwest. Some of these bottomlands and lowlands that are filled with pastures and normally planted to crops, we're going to lose that or we're going to have to wait a long time to plant that this year. So certainly an impact with this early April flooding on top of the mid-February flooding across the same general area. Yeah, on the opposite end, though, Brad, when you look at the West and the snow water equivalent, how is that situation for California growers this growing season who rely on that for irrigation? Yeah, we've actually got some pretty good news for much of the western United States. Looking at spring and summer water supply for the western U.S., if you draw a line roughly from the Sierra Nevada eastward to the central Rockies, everything along and north of that area looks to be in pretty good shape for spring and summer water supplies. It also helps that reservoirs in almost every state of that area are doing well. With the California, for example, almost 120% of average storage moving into this spring and summer. Let's talk about that snowpack this winter because it is clear it was the haves and the have nots when it comes to snow. And I know you have a map that can paint that picture for us. Yeah, so if we bring that up, you can see that if you're pretty much north of a line from Kansas City to Washington, D.C., Pretty much folks north of that, Northern Plains, Upper Midwest, Northeast came up short on snow for the 2024-25 season. In some cases, as much as 10 to 30 inches short. That's a concern for those areas heading into the spring because they depend on that moisture from melting snow to provide soil moisture in the spring for newly planted crops. So if we were to have a dry spring and summer on top of that nearly snowless winter, that is where we get into concerns for drought expansion or intensification heading into the heart of the growing season. You said if we have a dry spring or summer, does that look likely? So let's start out by taking a look at the current status of drought. The latest U.S. drought monitor is showing that we actually still have elevated drought coverage compared to normal, looking at three primary areas of drought concern. So I think it's really those two Western drought areas, which have kind of almost merged at this point, where we do have big concerns for drought heading into the growing season. All right, well, thank you so much, Brad. I appreciate it. There was tariff whiplash this week as the market navigates a pause out of the White House on most tariffs, yet ramps up the trade war against China. Arlen Suderman and Darren Fry join us next to dissect the markets.